Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Frosini Constantino. I am an associate professor in the strategic management of projects at the Bartlett uh, School of Sustainable Construction at UCL. And today I have Andreas with me. Hello, Andreas Nachbargauer. I'm Professor of uh, Management at the University of Applied Sciences, uh, uh, BFE Vienna. So we we did this uh, special collection, which uh, we have called the uh, Digital Learning and Education for a Project Society. And uh, we would like to share with you some of the ideas that we had before we started the, the, the special collection, uh, but also some ideas that come from the papers themselves. Um, and Andreas, I don't know what your thinking is, but I think uh, we started this paper, this uh, special collection by trying to cope ourselves with uh, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on our education and our learning. This was a very significant blow, if you like, uh, that all of our practices uh, faced. Uh, suddenly we had to come out of the classrooms and we had to very quickly learn and become very proficient uh, in our teaching online. Um, and therefore it was a great opportunity for us to try to capture some of these experiences that uh, come, came from ourselves uh, in our editorial, but also from the educators in our community and the broader project management community. Um, shall we go into what the different papers are showing? Well, uh, I, I, I would like to, to, to talk a little bit about uh, more a general uh, impression, and that is, uh, well, uh, when we looked into the paper and also the experiences, uh, we realized that online teaching is not anything fundamentally new in, in the developments. Uh, also, the papers show that, but uh, this uh, enforcing trends that are going uh, on and, and will definitely uh, be here to stay. So we will not get rid of online, we will not get rid of virtual, but it's reduced and incorporated into the normal way of teaching and learning. That's my experience. Yes. When we... Yeah. When we look more into the paper, well, uh, that's also one issue that one of the first papers uh, stressed and that said, OK, uh, we need uh, digital intelligence uh, as project managers, but also as educators. So I think that's that's one of the basic messages. Um, well, uh, we have mixed results uh, how to deal with that. So some said, well, uh, we should address uh, uh, students uh, more in, in more open way, be flexible uh, and, and be some kind of uh, yeah, sanitizing them. And others said, no, not really. Project management is a tough, tough work. It's it's a hard world outside there, and we have to bring that into the classroom. So challenge that, challenge them, especially also in virtual settings. Why not? Uh, that's uh, one discussion we had, and I think that's an interesting discussion. Um, others, other papers talked about especially how to engage people, how to uh, get effective responsiveness, motivational climate, how to arouse that in, in, in the classroom, in the virtual settings. Uh, so uh, they all emphasize student autonomy, self-motivation that is definitely more needed than in face-to-face -face courses. Uh, so we need more self-motivated uh, students and that also means that the role of the teachers changes so we are not the ones who tells everyone uh, how things are uh, that's a third uh, message and the and the last one is uh, well uh, uh, there are many new instruments out there and obviously one instruments uh, or one of the instruments that we that we saw is coming up 
is, is games, business games in, in also project management. And it works in the in the uh, online setting as well as in uh, present setting. So that's also one of the of the messages. We have three papers out there on serious games, and uh, I think there's much in there to learn, not only just conducting the game, but also in the setting of the game and, and what is needed in the surrounding, in the technical infrastructure, in, uh, it comes uh, not cost free uh, also for uh, the universities. So uh, m I think there are many recommendations there for using online serious games in these three papers. So I think I think our papers, uh, the papers that came in uh, for this special collection generally captured this idea of uh, uh, they, they were quite technical in uh, what they were trying to address, which was uh, desirable and of course very understandable since they were written in the first months of the pandemic and throughout the pandemic. Uh, but also they capture the this wider shift that we are seeing from traditional education where we have very fixed patterns of organization, aims, methods of instruction, instruction uh, where the students are passive receptors and we are moving it's a wider trend that has been happening since the 60s and the 70s and we are moving into a more progressive understanding of education where the student experience the professional judgment of the educator but also digital technology are take center stage and they promise to create a reform and I think this reform that we are talking about in a global world uh, is captured uh, very nicely by some of the authors um, who say that uh, uh, digital promises to create a global knowledge space where uh, minds and technologies learn together in order to create global wisdom and where global wisdom can actually grow. So I think our papers were very hands-on in terms of the experience that the, their authors were having at the time of writing them. Uh, but generally, I think the special collection captures this broader uh, role that technology has in education and fundamentally reforming it in very, very significant ways. And of course, as you say, this is very relevant to projects because in projects we work with technologies, projects are embedded in the context. Um, so it is very important to carry on uh, understanding how this trend from a more traditional uh, education and project management, we are moving into a more progressive education and project management. Uh, the last point that I would like to make is that uh, some of the points that we raised in our call for papers, which were not addressed at all in the papers that we received for the uh, special collection, were all about uh, uh, social and institutional inequalities. Um, we assumed in our call for papers that uh, technology on the one hand can help address social inequalities uh, by providing reach and extending the reach of educational offerings. But then we were also keen to see if there are going to be any new social inequalities that are going to arise from uh, such a shock that was the pandemic and of course the technology. Um, a second idea that uh, we had was about uh, new players and education providers. We see that the education space is progressively being uh, populated by a number of different education providers who extend way beyond the university. And uh, we were looking to see if that would be an issue that was relevant to our audience. Uh, we still think it's a very important issue because it changes the landscape within which education is both produced but also uh, delivered. And finally, there is uh, uh, always a link with grand challenges and uh, the global problems that uh, our planet and humanity is facing. And of course, education has a critical role to play in addressing these grand challenges, but perhaps 
when we are within a grand challenge such as the pandemic, we we try to make ends meet, let's say, rather than reflect more widely. So maybe that, those are all areas for the future that we can take forward. So uh, I think uh, the special collection, it's full of interesting paper, but it's still a start of discussion. So uh, we will uh, see long term effects and uh, we, we definitely hope to continue the discussion then. Uh, also in, in, in this channel's project, Leadership and Society, we have a special format for that, the Enable format. And uh, I think we will all welcome further contributions uh, for digital learning and education in this uh, section. Fantastic. OK, so this was a very brief video for you to uh, have an introduction to the special special collection. We hope that you enjoy reading the papers and they will stimulate new ideas and uh, create new paths for your thinking and for your work. And uh, for us, it has been a pleasure to prepare the special collection. So thank you very much, Andreas. Thank you.